morning. My name is Kevin Andrews, and this is my presentation on choosing an operating system from the perspective of an IT professional. As an IT professional, this is probably one of the more important decisions that you're going to make for your users or your customers. And it's a decision that really affects everybody. Uh, when you choose an OS, if, it's, if it goes well, then hopefully nobody will notice. But if it goes poorly, then the users can't get their jobs done very well because they're always having to focus on fixing incompatibility issues, uh, not knowing how to operate the machine with that system, uh, and having to call you up to, to fix the issues that arise. And of course, you'll spend all of your time fixing those issues as opposed to doing the rest of your job. That being said, it's not really a difficult decision to make, especially if you follow a few steps. And the first thing you'll want to do is answer a few questions. Uh, first off, why do you need a new operating system? Are you simply upgrading to keep up with technology? Are you helping a startup business? Or maybe you're building a custom machine for a customer. What will the operating be used for? A related question. Are you upgrading uh, an entire network for a large business? Maybe that startup business that you're helping out is a multimedia company who needs to edit videos, music, pictures. Uh, maybe that customer wants a gaming machine. Or maybe they just want to Skype their family. What's the budget? One of the bigger questions because operating systems vary so much in function and cost. And a lot of the times you'll really get what you pay for with these OSs. What kind of hardware are you working with? Uh, certain operating systems will require more resources from your computer. Uh, uh, heavier server OS might require more processing and RAM than maybe a lightweight open source operating system. And how knowledgeable are your users? Are they going to be able to adjust to a steep learning curve if it's an unfamiliar territory? Uh, or, or do they need something a little more basic? And how knowledgeable are you? Because you can find the perfect OS to complete a job, but if you don't know how to support it, then it's really no good for you. And once you answer these questions, you'll want to look at your options. And there are countless options for operating systems out there, but we're going to look at a few. Uh, Windows, Mac, and Ubuntu and Fedora, which are Linux distributions. And uh, we'll take a brief look at some other Linux distributions as well. Windows is probably the most, is definitely the most popular operating system. More or less anybody who's ever used a, a computer has seen Windows. Right now, Windows 7 is the most popular in the enterprise environment, uh, though it's likely to change with Windows 10. Uh, and most servers are running Windows Server Edition. Uh, and it's, it's such a variable operating system that can be used for anything from basic office tasks, for running more powerful productivity software like QuickBooks, or um, maybe even just home computing for entertainment, movies, games. And there are a few pros and cons to, to each of these operating systems. Some of the good things about Windows is it's familiar to most people. Yeah, everyone's used it before. They, they know what the start button is, where the control panel is. There's a wide range of available software. Anything that you need for your PC is available on Windows. Usually there are free versions for it as well. For that customer that you may be designing the computer for, most games are available on PC. Uh, a lot of games are available exclusively on PC. Uh, and there, it's an easy installation. Windows walks you through it. It's uh, it's uh, next, 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 inner information, finish. Um, there, there are a few faults with it. 
it's an easy target for security and virus threats, historically speaking. Um, and uh, can be pretty high in cost, especially if you're buying a, a volume license, a server OS, or one of the professional or enterprise editions. Moving on to Mac, um, the, the current edition of Mac OS is OS X Yosemite. Um, Mac has uh, a fairly small but very loyal user base. Um, they're very popular in education. Uh, back when they started out, they, were, they would donate computers to schools, give school systems discounts, help students. Um, and are often used in creative markets, video editing, uh, photo editing, music. And some of the nice things about Mac OS, um, they're designed with users in mind. They're designed to be completely foolproof. And they, they come with a lot of high quality software like GarageBand, which is a fairly powerful digital audio workshop and includes some synthesizers, virtual instruments, and iMovie, uh, which is used by professional video editors. Uh, they're very well built. When you're buying a Mac, you're buying an Apple PC, and Apple does not skimp on their hardware. Uh, they're very secure. Um, people don't really write viruses for Mac very often because it's such a small user base. But they are very highly proprietary because when you buy a Mac, you're buying an Apple PC, and uh, the the operating system doesn't work with all with all hardware. It can be very difficult to to repair and support uh, because when it breaks down, the Apple Corporation they want you to bring it to them for repairs. Uh, they, they require a lot of special tools. Sometimes the hardware is soldered in. Um, and the variety of software available is much smaller than that for Windows. So it's growing a little bit. You can't find everything that you can for Windows, and there's not always a free option. Um, it's very expensive. And there's always this. Editing is all Mac based. And, I mean, you know, the programs out there on the PC, whether you're using an Avid or using Final Cut Pro, you're working on a Macintosh. Using a Mac is a little different than using a PC. It's not so much operating computers, it is sort of tricking it, fooling it, and doing what it is you really want to do. Uh, you kind of have to sneak up on it. I don't feel like I'm operating the Mac so much as I'm just there sharing the Mac experience. And if I can do something useful while the Mac is willing, so much the better. One of the coolest features of the Macintosh is it's really easy to shut down. Uh, all you have to do is be using a piece of software and then poof, it goes away. It's gone. It's shut down. You didn't push any buttons. You didn't close. You didn't even save. It. It's just gone. Unless you want to shut down a Mac. Oh, that's a whole other story. I mean, you try to close a program and it locks up. And then you do that funny, what is it, the cloverleaf period thing? It's unnatural and ultimately useless interrupt key. Then nothing moves. Then you push the power button and it won't turn off. You go around and unplug it. And you better hope you're not on a laptop because then you got to find the damn battery trying to pull that out. But they never shut down. So I put my CD in the CD-ROM tray, and I'm copying media off that scene, dragging it on my desktop, dragging it on my desktop, dragging it on my desktop, I eject it, and where did my files go? It's the only operating system I know of where click and drag does not mean you actually copy or move anything, no, you're just making shortcuts on your desktop. So I've got my next CD, and I slam it into the CD-ROM tray, and lo and behold, it starts playing all by itself. I'm looking for a way to turn it off, finally, out of desperation, I click and drag the CD into the garbage can, the system locks up. So I go to the corporate period space bar thing, hoping I can stop the program, and I get a little caution window saying, careful, interrupting this program may lock up the system. I try to click OK, but the system's already locked up! I like the handle here. That's how you can attach a chain and use it as a bow anchor! The Mac is practicing some kind of bizarre psychological warfare on me because I'm working late at night. At the core of my eye, I keep seeing this thing jumping up and down. The update manager is bouncing at the bottom of the screen like a Jack Russell fucking terrier. So I'm looking around in the list of the files, trying to find the executable that wants me to update. And if I click on any one of them by accident, I rename it! Oh no, it's been renamed nothing. It was some kind of important system file, and the computer crashes! 
On a PC, no data is really lost. I mean, there's a way to undelete a file. If you know what you're doing in DOS, you can go in and recover anything that's been corrupted. On a Mac, if you lose a file, you run to the store to get it. The Mac version of Norton Utilities, you run back only to have Norton go, You idiot! You own the Macintosh! The file is fucking gone! It's just gone! Don't have any tools or any kind of buttons or whatever dials or switches in the bottom of the screen because if you reach for them, the dock menu comes up. Angle around and slide and dodge the thing to hit the control. It's kind of like boxing with your computer. I can put it on the bottom, I can put it on the left, I can put it on the right. No, I can't put it on the top. That's reserved for the mighty blue apple. My name is Hunter Kressel, I'm an editor, and I cut together everything you saw tonight on a Macintosh. Mac killed my inner child. Moving on from there, uh, an increasingly popular alternative to Windows and Mac PCs Windows and Mac operating systems are Linux. Uh, these are open source, which means that whenever the operating system is installed or created, whoever designed it provides the source code so that anyone can go in and edit it and change it however they want. Uh, most options for Linux are free. Uh, you can download them from their, their websites. Um, uh, they they offer an alternative to the usual. Um, they have a small but growing user base, and there are dozens and dozens of uh, districts, distributions, different versions. Uh, one of the more popular ones is Ubuntu. It's uh, it's free and open source. So they do ask for a donation when you go to download it. Um, it's become probably the most popular Linux distro. Uh, particularly for home users. Um, it, has, it also has a free server edition if you wanted to set up a domain. Um, and it's, uh, some of the, the good things about it, it's, again, free. Anyone can download it. It's highly customizable. You can, with Linux operating systems, you can do more or less anything you want. Set it up however you need to. It's a lot of system resources. It, it requires something like, for the newest edition, 512 megabytes of RAM, uh, 1.2 gigahertz processor. It's, it's a very tiny operating system. And it's fairly user friendly, relatively speaking. Uh, and when you download it, you also get free support for five years. And if you make it here to last for five years, I applaud you. Uh, but it can be a little difficult to use at times. Some of the some trivial tasks, like installing something, uh, require use of the command base terminal, which can be complicated. The commands are different than the familiar Windows commands that people used before. It's unfamiliar. It, it sort of resembles Windows or Mac, but a lot of things are in different places, call different things. Um, and a lot of users report uh, compatibility issues with the drivers, and it, it can be hard to find compatible software as well, uh, application software. Um, but the uh, the options are growing, and each new edition makes improvements on the last. Um, Fedora is another popular Linux distro. It's designed primarily with enterprise users and developers in mind. It has a mix of graphical and command-based interface, um, and also has a uh, server cloud, cloud edition available on their website. Uh, it's highly customizable, and even more so than Ubuntu is. Um, very stable. Uh, users report switching from any other operating system to Fedora, and they've never had fewer issues with stability. Uh, and it's, it's very secure. Um, most Linux distributions, nobody really writes viruses for them because it's such a small user base. 
and Fedora particularly is designed with enterprise users in mind, so it's easy to lock down. But it can be very difficult to learn. There's, there's a very steep learning curve. If your user base isn't very knowledgeable, then they may not be able to move past it. Uh, and has a heavy reliance on the command interface, more so than Ubuntu would. And it's very heavy on system resources. Uh, bare minimum requirements for RAM are two, gigger, two gigabytes. And there, there are a few other Linux distributions out there. Um, there's Kali, which is designed primarily for uh, security and penetration testing. Uh, DDN, which is very similar to, to Fedora. Um, Mint, which is based on Ubuntu and uh, is very user-friendly. It resembles Windows a little bit more. But there's Arch, which is sort of bare bones operating system that you configure every little bit as you install it. So you can make it any kind of operating system that you want. And then of course there's Android, uh, Google's operating system for mobile devices. It's based on the Linux kernel. And even with all of this information, people ask, well, what's the best OS? And ultimately, there is no one best operating system. Uh, it all really depends on you know, what your users need, what you need. And <coughs> ultimately, no one reigns supreme. Thank you.